Hello and welcome to the Friday, April 19th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Portland, Oregon. Xavier ran into some interesting malware that distinguishes itself by the use of a UDF image. The typical extension here is .img and UDF stands for Universal Disk Format. This format is sort of an alternative to the well-known ISO format that you may find when you ever burned a CD or DVD. However, it works pretty much like one of those ISO files and Windows will happily open it. The malware itself, however, is not really all that special. It uses Auto IT, the scripting language that's quite well known in the malware world in order to perform its malicious tasks. So while this is well recognized by antivirus tools, the important part here is that you actually scan these image files in particular, as in this case, they are arriving as an email attachment. I always am a little bit hesitant to outright recommend blocking extensions like this, but I don't think I remember ever receiving a legitimate .img or UDF or ISO file for that matter as an email attachment. So my recommendation here would be just block these attachments at your mail server. Back on March 21st, Facebook did release an interesting press release with the somewhat misleading title of keeping passwords secure. The actual press release was about how Facebook did quite the opposite in storing passwords in clear text and not really adequately controlling access to this password store. Well, uh, today Facebook amended this press release stating that the same thing also happened to Instagram users. Unrelated, the last couple of days, uh, Facebook also admitted to actually downloading email contacts from users. However, in order to be a victim here, well, you first had to give Facebook your email password, which apparently Facebook was asking for from some users and those users willingly handed over their email password. There is really absolutely no reason for you to have to ever do that to a website in order to authenticate you or in order to use features like, for example, sending email via that particular website. And the group that calls itself LabDuckTegan was apparently able to breach servers that were used by Iranian state-sponsored attackers. As part of this breach, they were able to get their hands at the source code of a number of tools that are unique to this particular threat actor. And they were also able to retrieve things like lists of command and control servers, as well as some of the data that was stolen by this group. In addition to this data lab, Duke Tegan, which claims to be located in Iran itself, Promise to release details regarding the identity of some of these state employed attackers that have created this particular malware. Now, the source code released as well as some of the data that was released appears to be authentic. Of course, uh, no real way to know for sure where this exactly came from, but the uh, lab Tegan appeared to be with uh, some certainty to be able to breach part of the infrastructure used by these Iranian state hackers. Apparently what made the entire task easier was the fact that uh, this particular group of attackers did not really believe in strong password policies. So you have passwords like password 1234 and the like that was apparently used to secure some of these systems. In the show notes, I will link uh, to a blog post that discusses some of the malware that was found as part of uh, this breach. The files themselves were originally only leaked via Telegram. 
And back when Windows 8 was released, Microsoft added a new feature called Live Tiles. Live Tiles allow websites to publish content directly to the desktop. The way this works was that participating websites would publish an RSS feed and Microsoft had a website notifications.buildmypinsite.com that would read the RSS feeds and then convert them into the right format for Windows 8 Live Tiles. Now, this service never really was all that popular. So next thing that happened is that Microsoft discontinued the service and they removed this host name, notifications.buildmypinsite.com. However, they left the name server entries that pointed to some of Microsoft's Azure's domain servers. So German security researcher Hanno Böck uh, went ahead and registered a web server with uh, Azure and then registered this host name for himself, which uh, Microsoft didn't block. So he was now actually able to resolve this host name again and point it to a server of his choice. And with that, he was able to deliver Microsoft Live Tiles to users that were still using Windows 8 with the according configuration. Initially, he tried to notify Microsoft about the issue and didn't get a response. So he did some proof of concept uh, experiments in order to show what can be done by owning this particular host name. By now, Microsoft has reacted and removed it from its name servers. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.